So thank you so much sir for joining us today and uh, coming to guide our students uh, on mindset and working towards goal and it is a pleasure and honor to have you on today's session and i believe that our students will get a lot of the uh, guidance and lot of things from your side which can ultimately help them to build their career and build their life so thank you so much for joining first of all sir my pleasure my pleasure thank you for having me It's a great opportunity for me to uh, link up with youngsters through your platform. I am very excited in this session. Thank you. So, uh, sir, what I have seen in past few years and my experience, and when I got connected with the students, I found few questions like which ultimately few like all the all the students I must say may felt like and they faced. So, one of the question is. You know, like when when we start with the word mindset, our session name is mindset for success and working towards goal. So when I uh, discuss about the mindset, I want to uh, understand like what do you understand with the word mindset and how it is crucial for succeeding in life. Wonderful question. Mindset is a very confusing term for many of the youngsters, not only for youngsters, even for adults, because many people think that it is about just thinking something. But I normally feel that mindset is like a motor and gearbox of a car, where you know what to do and you have the power to do, but actually it is useful only when it starts rolling the wheels. Right. So mindset is not just thinking. Mindset is setting your mind to act. But many people act without thinking, so it's a bit vague. Once you know that this is the mindset, then your actions will follow that setup. So this is how you do. For example, in a studio, you do okay. I'm going to do this setup for blue lighting. Then you do the blue sets. Then everything looks blue. Similarly, positive mindset is where you make it positive, but you act on it. There is something that we should, I mean, all of us should understand that I am also coming from a very poor background and a very economically challenged background. So in that way, we know that there are challenges in life. I normally go by, I don't know, in your age, you don't know this, but earlier there used to be a watch called automatic watch. The watches, earlier watches, you have to key them every day. You have to key them. Probably your father would have had, your grandfather would have had. Then they came up with the automatic watch. Automatic watch is one of the concepts that I always keep in my mind because it blew my mind when I saw what is actually happening. What is special about automatic watch? You need not give key. Then how it runs? There is no battery at the time, so how it runs? What it does? It takes all the shakes that you take in your life into key. So for that watch, it has to have a mindset. I am going to go add my key. If there is nothing inside, if you shake your hand, nothing will happen. You cannot add the key. Similarly, many of us walk into life without our mindset, and the world is going to shake us. I am not saying the world is very smooth, world is very friendly, everybody is there to help you. No, world will give you shock and blessings. At the time, this watch does two things. There is a part which moves like this and this. Always will be moving when you move it. What it does whenever it moves like this, it adds the key. Whenever it moves like this, it will not do anything. It will be resistant. It will be just passive. So add passive, add passive, add passive. Whenever in life somebody is going to help you, add something. Whenever there is somebody who is going to teach you something, add something. But if somebody is criticizing you, don't do anything. Don't reduce your thing. Right. So it's it's not that you have to get affected by negative. But you have to be affected by the positive. So whenever somebody says, "Oh, Wakas, you are wonderful," take it. When somebody says, "Wakas, you need to improve this," take it. When somebody says, "Wakas, you are useless," don't argue, don't discuss with them, don't take it. Right? For me, this is mindset. You decide that I want to go up, I want to grow, I want to elevate myself. So I don't want to fight. There is a beautiful song in uh, Spider Verse. There is a a uh, comic movie if any of you see this there is a beautiful song elevate elevate will talk about this precise mindset i want to elevate myself i want to go up i don't want to argue with you i don't want to fight with you but 
my mindset is very clear i want to go up so for me this is what mindset is you make up your mind with the understanding that there will be disturbances there will be negative things but you are going to react only to the positive and go ahead for me simply this is what it is the second question which comes uh, right sir and it is like all the youngsters uh, maybe like more of most of them feels like uh, they have some kind of goal and everything and mindset they have the unbelievable unbelievable potential to achieve anything but is still they procrastinate right they 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 never do things when it should be done they are not disciplined and my question is uh, related to this like procrastination is popularizing among youth although they have unbelievable potential to achieve anything what do you suggest to become productive and disciplined thank you you know procrastination is basically uh, i i think your uh, audience are bilingual so aaj nahi karenge kal karenge Right. This is basically what procrastination is, right? मुझे पता है करना पड़ेगा, but आज नहीं करेंगे, कल करेंगे. This is the this is the single line in which you can write the failure story of 80% of the humanity. I'm not even exaggerating. Many many people do this. It is not the youngsters only. You you are addressing to youngsters, but I can assure you, very old people, adults. who are family people or working officers even top notch officers we all face the same thing i individually face the same problem procrastination is basically aaj nahi karenge kal karenge now it's like a gravity it's like a force right just because you understand it it's not going to go away first you have to understand second you should do something to do it so if you want to build a rocket you have to understand that anything if you throw a ball the ball is going to come down just because you understand gravity the ball will not go up you have to invent a rocket fuel which will push it above the atmosphere then only it can go so similarly first part is to understand gravity which is procrastination what is pulling us second is what we can do about it. right do two, two things procrastination one is many people feel that okay i have a lot of time at least the youngsters normally feel i have a lot of time for them I, my only simple thing is that if you plant a seed today if it's going to give fruits in 5 years you should do it today don't do it next year then you have to wait for one more year the sooner you do the better it is so first is don't assume you have lot of time you can do it last last month mein padenge i can crash it you know all these things come because you think you have lot of time if you can read it if you can read it in one month do it now to do it next to the close to the exam right this is first thing second thing which is normally a problem is about our imagination of capacity and what we can actually do what it means it means we think okay i'm going to read 100 pages of a book per day right so you make a chart you put a color pencil you put a sticker everything but the first day probably you are reading say push it 20 25 pages next day it goes to 15 third day three pages fourth day you say okay i'm going to change my plan i'm not going to read it i'm not going to compete for this exam i'm going to read right so this is mainly a problem not because you cannot read but you have set up a goal which even you cannot reach so i normally tell my youngsters you know i have a son i have a daughter i have a lot of nieces nephews and their daughters i i live with a lot of youngsters i tell them the same thing i say if you think you can read 100 pages per day don't keep it as your first day goal keep your first day goal as three pages a day second day is four pages third day is five pages or 10 pages fourth day or first week is three pages second week is 10 pages go slow even if you think you can go there don't jump even if you think your capacity is 100 pages per day don't jump start very 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 slow uh for my female audience and the male audience all of you have seen probably your mother or somebody wearing a pearl necklace okay let's say your success is a pearl necklace If somebody shows you a pearl necklace and says, "What is the most important part in this pearl necklace?" Many people will say the pearls. No, 
you know the string that is attaching all the pearls that is the most important thing in the pearl necklace if the string is not there none of the pearls will stay now what this means for a procrastination a procrastinator will say that okay i have a brilliant idea i'm going to study this book and i will do it next month but that is like a pearl if you don't have the habit of adding one pearl per day throughout your life you will not have a pearl necklace you may find one pearl throw it another pearl after 2 3 months throw it so at the end of 5 years you will not have any pearls with you you should have first the habit of reading how much you read is not very important how many days continuously you have read is more important if somebody is reading 3 pages 3 pages 3 pages for 3 months or 5 months that person would read much more than somebody who is going to read 100 pages over the weekend only so the habit becomes more powerful than the size of the pearl you are getting right so my advice for procrastinator is that lower your expectation consciously if you very confident you can do 25 pages per day don't do 25 pages per day try to get 10 days of continuous reading habit that 10 days marked on the calendar is more powerful than the 25 pages or 100 pages you have that habit will keep you that habit will give you so much of power right so this is the second aspect now third aspect is many of the youngsters are very talented and now they have so many opportunities i'm go guitar see right right or i want to read this book i want to read i want to see this movie right there are so many opportunities floating around us and you also are distracted by television or movie or mobile phone and life opportunities also for example somebody say you want you are a upsc aspirant for upsc you may have to dedicate one or two years of your life so that you can get a good rank like uh, you get ias or ifs or ips something top for that you have to do some one or two years that dedication will be disturbed by the opportunities floating around you oh my god if only i can watch this television series after that bilkul me padegi right so this will come after that television series probably a tour with friends will come then probably a cinema will come then probably a cricket match will come again there will be another wonderful television series the cycle goes on what to do should you be like a saint should you be like a muni that i will not do anything i will just focus is it possible for a youngster is it possible so i normally tell them that if somebody tells you you know you are ready to run today just run and if you reach wherever you reach that's your destination you run or you wait here do something some work for me for say 2 weeks i will give you a motorbike after that you can take the motorbike and go wherever you want so you want to visit a friend who is very close by you decide no 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 i don't want to wait for the motorbike i just walk it's okay i can just run i don't want to wait you run to a friend then there is another friend then there is another friend then there is another friend these are life opportunities and after some time there is somebody who is very valuable say your lover or somebody who are 100 kilometers away you cannot walk then you will feel if only i waited for two weeks got the bike now i can go i can go faster i can go more rested i will not be tired i can go farther an opportunity a goal that you set for yourself like upsc or any state board service is like a bike somebody is telling you can you wait for me for two weeks i will give you a bike which you can use throughout your life once you get on to it you can do whatever you want for example if i want to read lot of books i am i'm a literary friend and i have a literary friend we want to spend next one month reading all the books but i have to do this exam what should i do we should say okay i can do the books later this is what skipping small opportunities for a big opportunity unless you say small no 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 book nahi chahiye tv nahi chahiye ye nahi chahiye at least for one year humko nahi chahiye and then you get the bike once you get on to the motorbike you can go far 
That is not a problem. But if you keep jumping here and here and here, saying that, no, I'll run, I'll run, I'll run, you will not go very far. So on procrastination, there are three things we should do. One is start very, very, very small, below your capacity, not above your capacity, not even your capacity. If you can read 25 pages, take five pages as the goal for a day. Do it, do it, do it. Get the habit of reading, then increase. This is the first thing. Second thing, don't imagine too much of your capacity, right? And then you will be very frustrated about it. And thirdly, when you are going to say small no's, realize that it is a temporary thing. You are saying no, not necessarily saying that I will never watch television. You are just saying this year I will not watch television. That's okay. Once you get a good position, a good job, you can help so many people. At the same time, you can watch so many television series. So it's procrastination that you have to now say, okay, I'm going to delay my gratification. If I watch a movie, oh, immediately I'm very happy, but I'm going to delay the gratification. Delaying gratification is a huge concept in uh, psychology. There is a very famous uh, experiment done. Uh, if you can type uh, delayed gratification. What they do is they call small children uh, say five years, six years old children, they say that, okay, I'm going to give you a chocolate. It's actually marshmallows, but let's say chocolate. They say, I'm going to give you a chocolate. If you eat this chocolate now, you get one chocolate. But I'm going to keep it on the table. I'll go out, I'll come back after some time. When I come back, if the chocolate is still on the table, I will give you two chocolates. So you have a choice. You eat one chocolate or you wait for a while, get two chocolates. They did it and they recorded the children. Some children will be like, okay, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm not. And then they will sort of lick it or they will smell it and keep it down. And some children will be, after some time, it's okay, I don't want to, I'll just eat it. They will eat it. Some children will be immediately, as soon as they eat it, they will eat it, right? So there are different characters. The brilliant part of this experiment is, what they did, they contacted all these children after 20 years. And then found what are they in life and then calculated how many minutes this kid waited for the second chocolate. If a kid waited for 30 seconds, the kid is not going up in life for a long time. The kid is not really up in life in many ways. But if a kid can withstand say 5 minutes, I like the chocolate but I am going to get 2 chocolates so I am going to wait, I will postpone. I will delay my gratification. The kids who did this, they were in top positions, not only in money ways, they were leaders, they were guiding people, they were coaching people, they were doing a lot of things in life. That is because the character they developed for delaying the gratification. Procrastination comes because you are attached to the minor chocolates. You should be able to say no. Right? So this is the third point I want to tell you, that you delay the gratification, you work for something big, Get on to the motorbike, then you'll be okay. This is the wonderful definition I have ever heard in my life, sir. This is the most wonderful definition I have ever heard about procrastination. Thank you. All the students who are connected with us, they are so much honored that they are seeing you and they are learning from you. And the procrastination and all the things about it, everything would be clear for now. I believe that, sir. While you were Thank talking you. about uh, the goals and uh, preparing about it, so uh, you you told about the milestones and everything. So I want to discuss uh, like uh, if a goal is a vision and milestones are the checkpoints of the journey. Uh, I want to ask her how important it is to create milestones and how a student can make personalized milestones as well because everybody have a different goal and a different journey. Excellent question. Uh, many people say this that as soon as you write down your goal on a piece of paper, you have beaten 95% of the population in the world. 95% of the population do not write their goals. They will think, okay, aaj ye karenge. Me, life may ye karenge, but they will not write it up. Right? So goal is a vision. For me, goal is more of a direction than a destination. 
because you may you may say that okay i want to reach this spot so what do you do after reaching that point? this is a question that all of us will have in life say hey, you want to be rich you say okay i want 10 lakh rupees okay okay so you earn 10 lakh rupees then what happens so goal is not a destination it's a direction what you want to say is that I want to be wealthy so that I'm not worried about my economic condition in some situation. And this is what your goal is. So that's the direction. But goal could be very vague. For example, in an exam situation, because it's DSR platform, let's say. In an exam situation, some people say, I want to pass this inspector exam, okay, customs inspector exam. That is my goal. Now, there are so many elements which can help you or stop you. If you do that, say in the exam, you pass, then you are goalless. What do you do? You set up another goal or you have studied so well, you put everything in your life on passing the exam and say two days before you were hit by some fever and you couldn't do the exam very well. So you fail. What happens? You give up. So goal should be slightly flexible, but with clear vision. I really like the way that you say that goal is a vision, not a destination. So we are in line with that. So we have to say that goal is, you should say that I'm going to prepare myself that I can ace these competitive exams. Exams. Inspector exam is one of the exams that you can clear. Or you can do UPS exam, or you can do forest service exam. A railway exam, any exam, but all of them follow a certain pattern. You need certain skill set. So your goal should be that I'm going to the person who is going to pick up the skills that will help me in passing the exams. That is the goal you should have that now I can do these many arithmetic problems within this time. I can clear these many English questions within this time. That is where you are actually going into the goal part of it, where you are saying that I will be skilled enough to pass the exam. Passing the exam is not the goal, but you raising yourself in the skill level, that is the goal. You cannot measure it in that way. So now we come to the second part, which is milestones. If you don't measure, normally you don't do it. Okay, there is a management. I, when I studied MBA, I was repeatedly told my teachers again and again that what you measure gets done. If you, in a family, you, if you are raising some young children or you have sisters and brothers, you want to teach them some life values, what you should measure is how many times they are saying thank you. If you tell them, you know, today in that dinner, you said thank you to five people, very good. Then they will do it more. If you say you behave well, they will not know what you are saying. Are they saying the way I was sitting in the chair? Or are they saying the way I was drinking this juice? What I'm being appreciated for, they will not know. So you have to be specific in saying, you said five thanks, six thanks, very good. Then they can count, they can do it more often. Similarly, when we do the milestones, individual milestones, we are going to say, okay, I say you are UPSNA, your choice is history. Your mains is history. Then your goal should be that I should be a person who can answer any of the history questions within this time, in this way, this quality, all those things. That is your goal. At the same time, your milestone should be, I'm going to learn how to read these many pages within this time. Or more importantly, because in UPSC, I repeatedly tell people, nobody is judging you on how well you read. Nobody is judging you. Everybody is judging you about how well you write. So your milestone should be in writing. How many pages I want to do? I want to do this one page writing in five minutes or three minutes. That's one milestone in a quality way. Another way is that I want to cover these many pages in a book by this time. Say this month, I want to cover these many pages. Right? That is another milestone. This is what will make you go to the goal of, I want to be a person who can answer any question in history in a comfortable way. So unless you measure the number of pages you read, more importantly, the number of pages you can write within the exam period. Right? 
So test repeatedly in the exam situation that I can do this. My milestone is to do these two pages answer in seven minutes. And initially you may do 13 minutes, then come to 12 minutes, 11 minutes. So exam is like a sprint, you know, it's like a running race, right? So when you run, somebody is counting. If you walk very slowly, I know everything, I know I have to go and touch the red ribbon, but I'll walk slowly, no, by the time the race is over. But you know very fast, but you're running this side and the goal is on that side and other people are going slower than you, but they may reach you, right? Both are important. You should know which direction to go and you should count how fast you're doing it, how well you're doing it, right? So these two things as milestones, I, I have milestones for many things. Let me say certain fields in which I have milestones. One is for my say personal finance, I have milestones. My reading habit, I have milestones. My friends and relatives, I call them repeatedly, just to even my mother when I call, I know that I have to call her. No, 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 I cannot postpone it. I have to call her, right? So I do that. And I'm still, I, I've done many courses. I have uh, many post graduations. I'm still enrolled in some courses. So I have academic, milestones also, I have to do that. Of course, I am a foreign service officer. So in the office, I have a huge team and I have to have milestones for the office and also for the individual officers, I have to manage them. So all these things are contributing to the general mission that you have as a person. And also as an officer, you are contributing to your government, you contribute to the country. And how do you do? By creating the milestones. Can we do these things so that this week will be more productive? Week by week, week by week, you keep adding. So milestones in my very, very simple way is the, I, I, many of you would have gone to Taj Mahal. I go to Taj Mahal and I'm, I'm a fan of historical sites in Delhi. I keep, I cycle to historical places in Delhi. So every week, tomorrow also we are going somewhere. So every week we go to an historical places. I see these huge buildings. You go to Red Fort or you go to Shesha Kotla. You stand there or Purana Kila, you stand there, marvel them and you look at the single block of stone. You go to Purana Kila, you go to Red Fort, they are not made of fort, they are made of that single stone, you know, each red stone built, 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 built and then you get Taj Mahal. For me, milestones are like a marble block. You have to do this week, you do it. This is not as exciting as Taj Mahal, it's just a marble block. But you have your wish. I'm going to do a Taj Mahal. For that, this block is needed. I will do this block, I will put another block, I will put another block. I know where it's going. If you don't have the vision, you will make many blocks. They are just scattered everywhere, useless. If you have the vision, I want to do Ta Taj Mahal, but you don't create blocks, no use. You cannot get. So Taj Mahal, that is a vision. That's your goal. Milestone is each marbles. You have to do it this week. I have to do this. This month I have to do this. So build and this wishes for your Taj Mahals. Great, sir. Great. And while you were discussing about uh, uh, ministry and your services and everything, so uh, I'm a little bit excited to know more about uh, all your uh, life and uh, I want to go a little bit personal with you so that our student would understand like uh, how you created your journey and what was the milestones there and what was the failure and everything and my next question is uh, related to this as well and uh, my question is sir for you is uh, when you were a student how did you finalize your goal and worked for it and how did you handle failure and setbacks if there were any sir thank you uh, you mentioned when you were a student as i answered in the last question i am a student even now i am enrolled in academic courses I do not think that education should end with your employment. I do not think education is only for your employment. And I also do not think that education itself does not have any value. I think education itself has value. Just learning itself is joyful. Right? So I'm going to slightly reinterpret your question to say that how I was as a school student or a college student. Right? 
And after that, I've been doing a lot of courses online and MBA, all those things. But I think essentially you're talking how, because many of your audience are at the school or college and how I handled it. I have a story to say, which is very important for students, especially the students who do not study well or who think that they are not good students. See, uh, last year, which is just 2021, in June, one of my batchmates, now we have all we have a WhatsApp group. So in that group, she is an IAS officer in Delhi now. So she posted saying that, oh, see, this is June 16th or 18th. And she said, this is the day that our UPSC results came. And we came to know that we have become IFS officers or IAS officer or whatever, whatever the ranks will give you some indication what you are. So this is the day. So this is the 25th anniversary of our result. Boom. We were all very excited. Everybody narrated their thing. Like my mother made a kheer for me, or we went to the temple. I went to see my nanny, take her blessings, all those things. And I had a party with my friends, everybody was saying. And then I said my story. My story was slightly different. I was married at the time. I had a son at the time. I was working in railways as a clerk at the time. These things are very different from majority of my batchmates who have passed the exam. They are probably fresh out of college or they are like uh, youngsters who are just looking forward to their life. So what I did, we were in a rented house in Chennai. So I saw the paper and in those days you have to go to the, uh, I mean I used to get the Hindu paper and they would print the results. So I went to the tea shop next door, got a paper and I saw the names and I came home while reading and we found the name. Yes, my name is there as one of the top ranks. And I was like, okay, my ch first choice was foreign service. So I was very confident that I would get the foreign service. Hugged my parents, hugged my wife, kissed my son. And then I took some coins. I, we didn't have a telephone at home. So I wanted to tell people. I went to the telephone booth next door, in the next street. I put the coins and I called. My sisters, my brother, I call them, you know, I passed the exam, now I'm an IFS officer, result will, I mean, result has come, order will come, all this. Then I called my college teachers. This is where I'm answering your question. College teachers knew me as a very versatile person. I used to participate in oratorial competitions, music competition, theater competition, everything. But I was not the topper in the class or something. I'm not, I'm not, if you say in the class who are the bright students, nobody will point out to Sridharan and say that, okay, he's a bright student. They will not. I mean, just above average or average student. So when I told them, you know, I call, I've cleared UPSC, I'm going to get high IFS. You're a big surprise. Oh, really? I know you are smart, uh, but this is amazing. Very good, very good. Right? So that is college. Now I call my school teachers, in, especially my higher secondary school, plus two teachers. I called three, four, five of them. And this is where the turn came. They knew me as a good person. They knew me as a slightly smart guy. But they never thought that I could clear UBS. So I am there putting the coin, calling Miss. Good morning, Miss. This is Sridhar, your old student. Today the results have come. I have cleared. UPSC, I'm going to get into foreign service. Hey, you're always naughty. Why did you call me? Tell me. I'm really telling you. This is a calm. I've cleared. Dharan, still you're making fun of me. Tell me, it's just 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. Why are you calling in the morning? What is the news? Each teacher in my school said this. Even at the end of the conversation, they were very reluctantly acknowledging that it could be true that I cleared the exam. Now, many people will think that this is a story about how the school teachers misjudge students. No. My teachers judge me correctly based on how I performed in my school. I was an average student, sometimes even below average student in school. College slight improvement, but school, no. Secondly, some people think that this is a story about how sudden 
surprises can come in life, how suddenly something can come, luck factor here. No, this is not about it. This is about how you can recreate your personality. As a student, when I was performing poorly, my teachers judged me poorly. Fair. I wrote only for 40 marks or 50 marks. They cannot give me more than that. What I'm worth, they gave them one. When I came to college, probably I did for 60 marks or 70 marks. That's a max. They cannot give anything more. But I knew that I am 100 marks. I knew inside me that I have the capacity to get 100 marks. But I didn't do the exam plan. When somebody says, Dharan, this is 40%. I took it as, Dharan, your performance in the exam is 40%. Sometimes, actually not sometimes, many times students take it as, Dharan, you as a personality is only 40%. You are not worth more than that. There are many people who are 100% worth. <coughs> Sorry. Sometimes, Many students take it as, it is a judgment on their overall capacity and personality. When somebody gives a paper, okay, you got 40%, they think, I'm a 40% material. I cannot be 100%. I'm a 40% material. I'm a 50% material. At the maximum, I'm 60% material. I cannot be 100% because my max teacher told me, my chemistry teacher told me, my physics teacher told me, everybody told me that I'm 50% or 60%. The difference is, I took it as, this is the mark for my performance. My performance came from my capacity. If my capacity is 100%, if I show only 60%, they will give me 60%. It doesn't mean that I don't have 100%. So, after my school, after my college, I continued to study. Immediately after my college, I got my railway uh, job, some other jobs also, uh, but I got some jobs. But I didn't leave my education. I joined some postgraduate diploma in journalism. I started studying. And then when I started doing many things, now the first part where I said there are small no's, there are some small no's. For example, I used to do theater, I used to do journalism, all those things. When I sat for UPSC exam, I decided, okay, stop the theater group. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to direct any place. If I want to act, I will act. I'm not going to do journalism. I'll stop for some time. And I stopped everything else and focused on the exam. At the time, what happens? The student who got 40% or 50% in the college and school is bringing out the capacity, 100% capacity into performance. I write, I check myself, as I said, how many, how fast I can write, how well I can write. I do mock exams repeatedly. I do mock interviews repeatedly. I learn, 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 put my capacity on, pour my capacity into performance. At the same time, increase my capacity. I was a, a Tamil medium student up to 10th grade. So when I joined plus two, uh, it was a, and up to 10th grade, I was in a boys only school. When I joined plus two, it was a co-education, girls were there in the school and it's English medium. So I was like, I want to hide, I wanted to hide myself away. I didn't want to be in this class. I couldn't converse even normal things in English. My English was so bad that one my one one of my English teacher was asking why you're sitting in this bench, why don't you sit here? I didn't know how to say this chair is broken. I didn't know I wanted to say it in Tamil. I couldn't say it. then she was a bit harsh to me. Why? I'm asking you why you're not answering. I was that level. So I have to increase my capacity in my English language. I have to increase my capacity in reading. I have to increase my capacity in learning. And then I have to perform it in a national level exam with lakhs and lakhs participating. And I have to up them. I have to be one of the toppers. So my simple message, if you're a student, is if somebody is judging you, they are judging you on our performance. Don't blame them. They are correct. They are giving you mark for what you are performing. But my request to you is don't take it as mark for your personality. Don't take it as your mark for your capacity. All of us are 100%. All of us can become 100%. All we have to do is focus, increase your capacity and then perform it. If you increase your capacity but don't perform, still no. You have to perform. You have to do the example. 
So, how do you test it? Again, you cannot say that, okay, I'm in college, I'm going to cut the college, I'm going to flunk in my courses, but when I try for UPSC, I will do this. No, if only I had this clarity, I would have taken each class exam as a small challenge. It's like a video game. You do this level, then you go to another level. You do this level, you go to another level, right? So, unless you do this level, if I cannot ace my class exam, how can I ace this? So I will take it as a challenge. Okay, next week I have a physics exam. I will to ace it. I will study in this week for physics exam. I'll ace it. Then probably I may not be the top of the class, but I will certainly, if I was say 25th rank in my class, I'll be 50th rank. Right? So this is how, if you're a student, keep it as small challenges, build it up. When somebody is giving a report on your performance, don't take it as your capacity. Right? I had my setbacks in my life, even in UPSC, it's not that first attempt I cleared everything. Each time I would go sometime, somewhere, one time I came up to interview and I didn't get any job. I came to interview, then I have to start again with clips, right? So these things will happen, but once you know that you are 100%, you know you have to work for it, you have to perform it, these setbacks will be like, oh, I did this, oh, I should have done this. They are very technical things at the time. You are not emotional. I remember when I went to the interview and failed, one of my dear uncle, he came home and he was in tears. Oh, what is this children? You studied so much and I saw you always studying and you didn't get any job. He was crying. I was consoling him. I said, uncle, it's okay. This is, these exams are like this and I know what, I, what mistakes I made in this. This time I'm trying again. I will get it. And he said, got it and he bought me a big box of sweets. So that is how it is. Setbacks is there to understand something. You either win or learn. There are only two options in life. There is no win and lose. When you take it win and lose, it's a problem. Win, learn. Win, learn. If you don't win, you're learning. Next, small win. Learn. Win, win, win. Then suddenly there is a big win. Right? That is how. If you're a student, best wishes. If you are not so bright student, special wishes. That's wonderful, sir. And I believe, sir, the session which we held today is uh, so much useful for students and it will help a lot of students who are going to watch this and they are so much uh, like uh, so much special that they are they came to watch your session. So thank you so much sir, for giving the time and uh, taking time to uh, guide our students on such important topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. As I said, this is always a pressure to link up with younger generation. I don't know why uh, is it because my mental age is low or something. I, I find that most of my followers on my social media are about half of my age. I'm 20, 20 to 30 people. I'm 55 now. Right? 20 to 30 people are almost 75, 80% of my social media following. Right? So I'm always excited to learn new things from them. Actually, when I started my Instagram, I didn't know much. You know, I'm more of a Facebook guy. And when I started Instagram, I asked uh, my friends, you know, how to do this. Most of my age group friends, they don't know Instagram. But my friends' children, my colleague's son, my colleague's daughter, they are following me. They will come into me, my uh, personal message and say, Uncle, you cannot put the link in the Instagram. You have to put it in your bio. Right? So they will guide me. So for me, it's always a joy to be with them. And when I started this YouTube, as you said, you know, now I've started a YouTube channel. And then also, I didn't know much of my, I mean, I'm not a, uh, from the beginning, I'm not a camera person. So I was asking my son, who is a musician in US, he's a hip hop singer. So I asked my son, you know, which camera to buy, what software to use. In this, this, rec this recording is also in a software in which he taught me how to do. Right? So it's always a pressure to be with youngsters, to learn new things. And I find I'm contributing something useful to them. At the same time, I want to assure all of you that you are teaching me so many things. So I thank you sincerely for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.